What is going on everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone and today we're going to compare the guitar that everybody should be comparing to the PRS Silver Sky SE. Let me explain. So all these videos and all these reviews and all these comparisons, everybody on the internet, it seems like, have, including, my, including me, have been doing videos comparing this to the core model Silver Sky, which isn't really fair. That's a $2,500 guitar. It's way better, not gonna lie. Uh, the people that say that these are exactly the same sounding and stuff, after you hear it out live um, and really play it like out live, it's not the same. This guitar, I think, is probably marketed more accurately to compete with the Player Series Stratocaster. So this is the made in Mexico $849 Strat. And that's $849, this is $849. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we did with the Silver Sky SE. We're gonna break it down. You're gonna hear them both. We're gonna talk about the big differences between the guitars, how they're similar, and then we're gonna get out the calipers. We're gonna take the pick guards off. We're gonna dive into these things so that you can make a better educated decision if you're kinda of down the middle on it about which one you should buy because I think the answer will be different depending on what you like because they're different enough but they're same the, the same enough. So let's chat about it. Okay, so, so let's just get a couple of big things out of the way. Uh, the neck radiuses are, this one is a nine and a half inch fretboard radius. This is an eight and a half inch fretboard radius. You can kind of tell, but it's a really discerning player obviously can tell. For somebody who's gonna buy this guitar though, a person usually who's upgrading from a Squire or wanting to get into that next level of guitars, the eight and a half to nine and a half probably isn't gonna matter that much. This guitar, the Fender, ships with nines on it, nine gauge strings. This guitar ships with tens on it, so that's something to consider. The tremolo on this guitar is set up to float a half step up, so when you pull the E string, you can pull up on the, tre on the tremolo and go a half step up. On this guitar, it's made to be flat against the guitar and you'll actually have to adjust the tremolo to do that. Uh, they both have synthetic bone nuts. They both have non-locking tuners. So far, I've found that the tuners on the PRS are better than the tuners on the Strat quality-wise and consistency and feel and being able to tell um, what you're doing, those ones are better on the PRS. Overall fit and finish, there's a few things. First of all, there's nothing bad about this guitar. It came perfect. I don't know how they do it. This guitar, and they both came from Sweetwater, so they do their 55 point check before they put them in the box, so there's nothing wrong with the guitar. This just comes down to kind of manufacturing stuff. For example, the way the pick guard is cut, and this is getting really nitpicky, but the way the pick guard is cut, it doesn't sit flat against the guitar. It also doesn't it doesn't follow the curve of the guitar correctly. I also don't like the screw choice that they use because they fit down in the holes instead of are like the vintage style kind of sitting up on top like this. Again, super nitpicky. One thing that's really cool about the Fender is that it has a three ply back plate where the one on the PRS is just like a plastic one. It looks a little more squiry to me. Paint work and stuff. This has got some like fish eyes in it from the factory. Um, two or three on this guitar. It's not terrible. I mean, I'm gonna play it. It doesn't matter. Screw-in tremolo arm, the old style cheap screw-in tremolo arm. It's okay, but the friction style on the PRS is a little bit better, a lot better. And those are probably the main differences when you're feeling the guitar. Uh, this neck is a lot different than that one, so we're gonna get into that and measure it. The feel of the finish on the back of the neck is great. This urethane is, is awesome that they use. Uh, this guitar, is seven pounds, 
14 ounces. This guitar is seven pounds, three ounces. That has been my experience over the years is that made in Mexico strats and tellies are traditionally heavier um, than their American counterparts. Probably by wood choice. This is alder, that's poplar. This guitar weighs exactly the same as the American Silver Sky, which is considerably lighter in your arms. That, I know 10 ounces doesn't sound like a lot, or 11 ounces, but it is. It, it, you can tell the difference. Yeah, so that's it. Let's go ahead and start ripping them apart. Well, we should probably hear them first before we cut all the strings off. So for those of you that are curious, I just hot popped it. I didn't touch any settings, nothing. I did have to, with this guitar, uh, come down about one and a half dBs on the rec uh, recording level, because this guitar hits a lot harder. It's got, the pickups are a lot stronger. Like, you probably heard it. There's just more. These are a lot better than those, which I kind of always knew that. I mean, this is probably, we get a lot of calls. We replace pickups on pretty much. These are probably one of the most popular guitars that we replace pickups on um, for people. So I kind of knew that. But to hear it one thing right after the other is pretty crazy. So these pickups are way better, period. 100% hands down. Uh, phenomenal. Way better than those. Uh, I mean, wow. Okay. And this guitar really is lighter. That 11 ounces is... It's... It changes it, definitely changes it. Okay, let's get this thing apart now. Now that we've seen and heard some of the major differences, uh, now we're gonna measure some necks, now we're gonna measure some pickups, we're gonna look at pot quality, we're gonna look at what's inside here, and then when we get done with all that, we'll chat about who should buy what. Okay, so there's some pretty interesting, weird things in here and some pretty cool surprises as well. Uh, let's do bad news first. So <clears throat> these pickups are a little anemic sounding to my ears. I don't really like them that much. I wanted to figure out why. When you check them with the meter, the DC resistance is really high. Super lots of winding. 7.25K on the neck pickup, 797 on the mid, and 8.55K on the back pickup. And you would think, wow, that's wound super hot. Why do they sound so anemic compared to the ones that are in the Silver Sky? Um, that's weird. Okay, here's why. Because when I measured with the gauss meter, the magnets in here, they're a third to almost half the strength of the magnets in the other guitar. So it's not just about the windings on your guitar. It's not just about the DC resistance of your pickups to tell you whether they're good or not. Um, the frequency response of the pickups is heavily influenced by the actual size of the magnets the length of them, the, the height of the pickup, the amount of windings, of course, which is what our DC resistance gives us, but also the strength of the magnet. So, why would they do this? I'm thinking it's because 
the magnets that they're using in here are probably cheaper to get than better ones. Really. And you might say, well, isn't it more expensive to wrap more windings around a pickup to make up for it and to design that direction? Not necessarily. It just depends where you get the stuff. So very interesting thing to find out. Now, the other thing that we found out is I kind of already knew this. This has been a thing for quite a while is hum single hum route in this guitar. So you could do whatever you wanted in this guitar. Good news wise, that's good news in my opinion. Good news wise also, we've got CTS 250K pots in here and we've got an Oak Grigsby switch. This is good stuff. These are good pots, uh, good pots, good switch. It's just the pickups that suck. Now, if it was me, I would just put a whole loaded pick art in there. I mean, that's what, you know, but that's what I do and that's what we sell. So that's what I'm gonna say, obviously. But I don't think you would have to with this guitar. I think you could just replace the pickups um, and go for it. Um, but I'm gonna say the same thing about the other guitar too. So that's probably a wash. However, if you weren't gonna mod anything and you were just gonna buy a guitar and just play it and not mod anything, these pickups are not as good as the Silver Sky SE, for sure. Okay, let's look at the other guitar. Okay, so for this guitar, uh, 7.2K on the neck, 7.2K on the middle, and 7.4K on the bridge. Uh, alpha full-size pots. Uh, this is an import switch, but it's a good switch. So it makes sense. This guitar, the way they do it's a little different. I don't know if you can see in here, but there's these metal poles in between each of the magnets, which is kind of interesting. Um, he mentioned, alluded to that in a live stream the other day, which is kind of wild. And then in this guitar, it's only single, single, single routed. So in order to do anything kind of fun, you would actually have to go ahead and route this guitar out. So, but that being said, this is pretty cool. This is a pretty cool guitar. Let's go ahead and move on to neck measurements. Okay. So this is where we start to get a little more technical with this stuff. Um, and we're going to get into neck dimensions and frets and that sort of stuff. Okay, so first things first, here's what we're going to say. Um, I flattened both fretboards completely flat, truss rod wise, so that we could check the fretwork because I had a feeling that this would be the case, and it is. The fretwork on the PRS Silver Sky SE is phenomenal. Absolutely perfect. This fender, on the other hand, is a rattle fest. Like, all the way down. There's, it's not, it's totally playable, but it really could use a nice level and recrown which right out of the box, you know, it's 50, 100 bucks. So just something to think about. Is it unplayable? No, but this guitar will play better out of the box just because the fretwork is better. If you look at the ends of the frets on all of the, on the fender frets, they are kind of like squared cut hard off where the PRS ones kind of have like a dome on them and they're like polished down, which is really nice. Like that's really attention to detail that makes this a lot better. So now let's get into dimensions because this is where it's gonna make a big deal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure in thousandths of an inch and I know you metric people are gonna flip out, but this is just how it is on websites. Like when you're specking a neck, this is how it's this is how it is. So I'm going to measure right at the first fret. We're going to measure how thick the neck is. 871. 830. All right. So 871 to 910. And then this one is 830 to 9.0. So they're kind of the same, but they're kind of not. Um, this one, it's weird because this one actually feels smaller in the hands than this one does, but they're pretty similar. Um, the arch of the back, the curve of the back is a little bit different. So there is that. 
Now, let's measure fret size. 60 thousandths. Sixty thousandths. So they're the same height, basically. And the these ones are narrower. So the PRS frets are narrower. The frets on the fender are wider, but they're the same height. Give or take a thousandth of an inch, but pretty close. So there you go. I guess we should now talk about which one of these you should buy. Okay, I'm not gonna tell you which one you should buy. Obviously, if you're a Fender guy, you're gonna buy a Fender. If you're a PRS guy, you're gonna buy a PRS. What I really think this is more useful for is for those that don't have a dog in the fight and who want their first S-style guitar but don't know what to get at 850 bucks. This guitar, the Fender, doesn't come with a gig bag. It will require some setup out of the box. The frets, fret work is not as good. The tuners are not as nice, but the tremolo is floated. The pots are great. The pickups are terrible. And overall, the guitar is, is really nice. It's what we're used to. It's what we've had. What's interesting about this is you're gonna say, well, nobody ever said a Strat was bad before. Well, I don't know that anybody ever put it to the test before, to tell you the truth, at this price point. And people are going to say, well, you should compare this guitar against something. Else. No, this is the price point. This is what it is. So at this price point, nobody's ever kind of pushed this envelope before, I don't think. Um, and don't get in the comments and be like, yeah, but there's this $300 whatever out there made in China that's better, blah, blah, blah. No. It's a good guitar. It's a really good guitar. But when you really get down to brass tacks, PRS has some things that are better. Now I didn't put it all back together, but first of all, let's talk about the weight. When it is assembled, it is 11 ounces lighter and you can definitely feel that when you play it. The fretwork is perfect. Um, the tuners are nicer and more accurate and hold tune better in my opinion. We won't get too much into the technicality of this, but honestly a three x three peg head is a better design for this guitar. It works better. It really is. Sorry Fender fanboys, but that's just the way it is. And don't get me wrong, played a Fender since I was a little kid, uh, but this is better. The nuts are probably just, that's probably a wash. However, this one is probably done a little better, if you ask me, out of the box. Fit and finish wise, this guitar is better. I wish they would have put a three ply um, backing plate on there. And this has a higher quality block, trim block in it than the Fender one does also. I think hardware wise, like the quality of the hardware, like the screws and how tough they feel and stuff, definitely the wind goes to PRS. For a guitar that you're not gonna mod, that you're not gonna do anything to, you're just gonna play it, I think the PRS definitely wins. If you're gonna buy a guitar and you're gonna actually mod it and use it as a modding platform and get a loaded pick guard and you know, do all kinds of fun stuff, I think then the Strat wins for sure. Uh, as far as the playing of it goes, if you've played a lot of Fenders before and you're comfortable on a Fender style guitar, then just get a Strat playing wise because it does feel Strattier. It really does. The, the neck profile obviously is really super uh, familiar. That being said, this is more familiar to a Fender guy than the Core SE guitar or the Core uh, Silver Sky guitar. So, you know, it's you're going to have to go try it. But, uh, oh, one big thing is that's Peo Ferro and this is Rosewood. And I mean, they do look better. This does look better, but you might not like the birds. So, you know, there's all those things, but I just wanted to dive in super deep, understand a little bit what's going on here. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you've tried both of these guitars, I think at 850, you can't lose with either of them. I just think that if you're a modder, it might lean you one way or the other, and if you're a guy who never wants to mess with anything and just play a good guitar, you're going to lean the other way. If you have any questions about it, get in the comments and let me know. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the like button and the little bell next to it. And uh, yeah, this was a fun video to do. We've got a live stream coming out on Thursdays. We've got another video coming out on Monday. We've got gear news on Wednesday. All kinds of stuff going. I've got a couple other of these little things to do with this PRS guitar and then I'll be done, I promise. But uh, I wanted to really dive into this stuff.
because we're doing some stuff that I don't think anybody else is doing and this is stuff I really think a lot of people really do want to know. So thanks for hanging out and we'll see you in the next video.